Hello, everybody uh, watching us on Facebook Live and on the recording and wherever else we decide we are going to put this, uh, this show uh, once we finally get around to it. Uh, I'm Steve Stott. Uh, this is another Keep the Ghost Light On from the Sherman Players. Uh, I am president of the Sherman Players. I'm here with my co-host, Robin Frome. Say hello, Robin. Oh, there we go. He's, he's got a new. He's got a new move for tonight. He's a new move every week. Uh, what will that crazy it. guy do next? We'll keep it find fresh. It. There we go. Keep it fresh. Keep people interested. The only. The only join us for that. Um, no. Uh, again, great, great guests tonight, and Robin will uh, introduce them in just a moment. Uh, I wanted to uh, say a few words today. Again, not a lot. Not a lot of great news going on um, as far as the performing arts. Uh, things have gone fairly quiet. Uh, what I really wanted to say uh, this week, I wanted to really make a comment on um, an event which surprised me. And um, that is the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah. Um, Macy's, the Thanksgiving Day Parade, since being in the US, I've watched it every year. And like most of the people, I suspect, um, I don't watch it for anything original. I don't watch it because it's different and thrilling every year. Uh, I watch it because it's more or less the same every year. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you get to see some good Broadway performances um, and you, know, you always look out for the Rockettes. Uh, ooh, what are those balloons? The same balloons as last year and there's one new and it's all a bit cheesy. But we watch it because it's, it's comforting and something fun to do on a uh, Thanksgiving morning. This year, um, things were different because clearly the parade as normal couldn't go ahead. Uh, and the reason I, I, I want to talk about this for a second is I saw this as a prime example of um, what can be done when you're faced with the fact that you can't do what you always did. Um, and what came out of that was actually, um, in, in my opinion, uh, a much better, a much more entertaining parade than usual. It wasn't the same. They could have shown clips from old parades and it would have been the same as every other parade. Um, what was interesting was the, uh, the way they had to stage the Broadway performances um, was, again, arguably slightly better than, than, uh, than the normal uh, arrangement. The... Um, the actual parade attendees, um, again, there was an opportunity here uh, out of adversity where the, the regular marching bands and the regular types of groups that they had that come from all over the country just couldn't be there. They couldn't be there to do the, the usual stuff. What they were able to do was take an opportunity for a little more inclusion. They took the opportunity to invite the groups whose parades and events had been cancelled or curtailed because of the pandemic and the shutdowns. Uh, they invited them along to do their thing. So we got to see some stuff we don't usually see. Uh, we got to see a lot more diversity. Um, you know, we, we can point at the uh, indigenous uh, peoples. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the Native Americans. Have we seen that kind of thing before? No. That happened. People mm -hmm. were thrilled by it. So maybe this is one of those examples where you're faced with not being able to do what you always did. So do you try and replicate that? Or do you, do you try and go in a slightly different direction? And in doing so, find that what you've got is, is arguably better, arguably an improvement, um, uh, progression to something different. And that really made me think about, you know, our little show, Keep the Ghost Light On, and the stories that we've heard along the way uh, of, um, of dyed-in-the-wool uh, performers and directors, producers, administrators, who suddenly find that the whole world is upside down. Uh, but instead of retreating, decide to take it as a challenge and, and, and innovate. Um, and, you know, I, 
I felt pretty hopeful after watching that, that even on such a large scale, even on something which, you know, for however many years the, uh, the parade has been going on, has been broadly the same. Um, they find they can do something different when, uh, when push comes to shove. Anyway, so that's my opinion on that. Um, if you feel the same, you feel different, you want to argue about it, you want to congratulate me on my, uh, my perception, uh, <laughs> then just uh, you know, give us a comment on Facebook and let us know uh, what you thought of that. So anyway, enough from me. Uh, over to Robin now to introduce our guests and uh, get us going with Keep the Ghost Light On. Robin. All right. Thanks. I, I missed the, uh, the parade, unfortunately, um, but that's interesting that, that how they did that. Um, and uh, yeah, I always, I always watch it. I didn't want to try it this time. So I'm glad you saw it, Steve. Uh, so our first guest is um, uh, an actress that I have worked with for a few times, uh, and I just enjoy working with her. She takes direction so well, and she's just such a a wonderful actress to work with um and she's also a good director and wonderful teacher um and i'm glad she's she uh decided to to be on this program um last i saw her i think in person where she was playing beatrice and much ado about nothing at the jcc and um we've been talking since then but uh, it's great to see you missy how are you doing Thanks for having me on. I'm feeling a little choked up, I gotta tell you. I mean, you said this might be like therapy. <laughs> <laughs> it's therapy. Uh -huh. it's my tell, therapy. Tell, tell us how you feel. <laughs> there was some news so in busy, the local um, theater, by the way, Steve. I think uh, yeah. the governor announced the grants today. Did um, Sherman, was the Sherman recipient of any of that? I have to say, I hadn't heard that that had been announced, but I will, we, we, we did apply out, for grants, so we'll, we'll see whether anything has come Yeah, up he there. put out Thank an you. email and some uh, social media listing theater by theater what ah. dollars were going out. Right, so the, the, show, the show's over, I'm going to go and look for that now. <laughs> the source money is coming because it all helps. Yes, anyway, I'm sorry, helps. I wanted to share That's that. Right. With no, thank you, thank you. Missy, tell us uh, a bit of your background. We don't have a couple hours, but um, <laughs> tell us a bit of your background. Um, and um, you have a new project, which is extremely exciting. Uh, tell us about that and um, how COVID has affected you one way or the other. Um, I uh, didn't think I was going to go to college. I thought I was going to pound the pavement and be an actress. And then a full scholarship to Western Connecticut fell in my lap. And I said, OK, I'll, I'll go for free. And I ended up having a great time at Western Connecticut, at West Kine, uh, as a communications and theater major. And I learned a lot. And I uh, ended up directing my senior project uh, with their children's theater program. And it kind of launched me in the direction I was going. From there, I had an internship with the, do you guys remember the Candlewood Playhouse? The Candlewood Playhouse, the regional theater that was knocked down and turned into a grocery store. But in its day, it was a beauty, a 500 seat regional theater where I interned in everything. I interned in the box office, in the costume shop, in the prop shop. I worked with the casting director, kind of learned everything. And it was like this icing on top of my education. Um, from there, I was hired to be the assistant <coughs> producer of their children's theater program, where I got to book acts and go to conferences and see what was out there. And uh, while working there, I, I met a gentleman who wanted to start a uh, performing arts school. And following him and teaching classes there, I learned that I want to teach. I, I really took to it. I, I really loved sharing the great education that I had. Um, so I was there for quite a long time. Um, uh, had got married, had my first child. Uh, the school went under while I was on maternity break and uh, kind of had to restart somewhere. And uh, that brought me to the community theaters in Connecticut. My husband and I bought a house in Brookfield, and I got to visit all the local theaters, Sherman and, and uh, uh, New Milford, you know, Brookfield, all, all these local theaters. And uh, the theater brand invited me to be on their board where I proposed uh, offering children's education. And uh, 15 years later, for 15 years, I directed their children's programs and uh, was such a delight and such a joy for me. And uh, the relationships and... Uh, the siblings, you know, a kid's, you know, the older kid would finish, the younger kid would start up and, and the relationship with the families and all that was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And uh, every spring 
for 15 years, I would write an origi original um, musical review with a theme. Um, they've been everything from songs about sports, which we called Broadway scores, or uh, <laughs> this past Ooh. spring, I know, I know, <laughs> uh, we were doing a screenplay to Broadway, which was a review about uh, musicals that started on the big screen and then went to Broadway, you know, Singing in the Rain and Wizard of Oz and all that other stuff, or even off Broadway. Um, we were right in the middle of that when uh, we heard that something was going to happen. And then we heard the schools were going to close and we always follow what the schools are going to do. And I kind of scrambled to, uh, to make a plan, but I was not at all prepared. I didn't have any kind of a, a curriculum that did not involve being hands-on with the children, being right there, showing them and teaching them and having that feedback loop. I didn't have any um, social media connection with my students. Uh, I didn't have a Facebook page. I didn't have a Twitter. Uh, all I had was their parents' phone number and email addresses. Uh, so we scrambled and I, I, I had many sleepless nights just staying up and just trying to transpose my lesson plan to um, a video of me teaching into a camera and saying, this is what we're going to learn this week. And then saying, meet me on Zoom. It was the first time I ever heard of Zoom. I said, what's Zoom when someone suggested it and try to go over this stuff. And it was very, very difficult. Um, and we kept saying, this is for when we come back in June. This is for when we come back in June. And we didn't come back in June and I was furloughed. And uh, my voice is shaking a little bit. Uh, uh, I was put on furlough, but I'm still thinking about the kids and the momentum because that's the way my program works. By the time we're finished with the fall program, we're excited about winter. By the time we're finished with our winter offering, we're excited about spring. It just kind of keeps going and rolling and rolling and we're and we're seeding the kids for the next great thing we're gonna do. You know, summer's gonna be great. We're already talking about that in the spring. And my momentum, you know, stop, the brakes were hit. And uh, I was I was begging for a Facebook account and I was begging for a Twitter account and I was begging for a way to reach for these guys. <laughs> um, but at the same time, my head is still thinking in that momentum phase of how do I keep it going? How do I keep it going? And this is when Disney put their Disney sing-along on TV. And this is when we were all suddenly taking social media and actors were, were, were doing bits and, and suddenly people are saying, well, let's rehearse on Zoom and that kind of thing. And I kept thinking, I got to join this bag, I got to join this bandwagon, I got to get, so I educated myself and I educated myself fast. Um, I took online courses. Uh, my son is a, is a computer games design major. I'm like, teach me what you know. I learned how to edit. I learned how to, I learned vocabulary. And I said, well, we're, here's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to be prepared in a way I didn't have in the spring. I said, my classes will never be canceled because of something, not even a snowstorm can cancel my classes because I'm going to have a plan A, B, and C of in-person and just like the schools in person, hybrid or remote. And I opened a studio. It's the first time I've ever been a business owner. It's called Play A Part. There's a little pun in there because we're going to we're going to play and create and have that valuable feedback loop of the in-person communication. Um, but we are ready to to go another direction if we have to. And so I wrote a riff on Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night Dream. It's called A Midsummer Night Zoom. Uh, where the characters in some scenes are talking on Zoom. In some scenes, they're talking on FaceTime. Um, I modernized a lot of the, the language. And uh, we, in Code Red in Ridgefield, uh, this past week, the schools, you know, stopped doing their hybrid. And I had a week of remote learning. And we just worked on those scenes that are meant to be in social media. And the kids find it very relatable. And I explained to them what the original was like and what our riff on it means and where the joke is for someone's familiar. And it's been really, I think, I think opening up a world for them as well of how to think of it, you know, both ways. These are the scenes in person, these are the scenes on film. And uh, th that's been a pleasure. Uh, there was one thing bug bugging me though. Uh, and that is when you're doing scenes, when you're recording yourself, when you have to watch yourself back on tape, on video, and you're a middle school kid, and you're a 13 year old, and you're going through those tough years, those middle school grades, what do you do? You judge yourself. You watch that tape, maybe you watch it 10 times, and you see every pimple, and you hear every stammer, 
and every misaligned seems like it's humongous. And I'm like, I really have to think of this like a teacher and I have to, you know, protect the kids in a way that prepares them to see themselves in this format. And I said, well, how do we do this? And that's when the Prospector Theater occurred to me, which I don't know if you know the Prospector Theater, it's a movie theater that is open right now within COVID uh, conditions. They were one of the first to do it. They are a nonprofit organization. Uh, they, uh, their mission is to hire, to uh, hire the differently abled. And uh, it's a beautiful building, a beautiful staff, a beautiful institution. And I said, well, what if we put our product on the big screen with an audience so the kids can hear the clapping. So the kids, kids can hear the laugh to the joke. So there can be applause that we encourage that you don't usually do at a movie theater at the end and prepare the audience. To, this this is, has, to be a, has to be a live experience for the kids because they can't do it in a theater right now. And uh, everyone has loved the idea. Prospector welcomed us in with open arms. Um, the kids are excited for that opportunity and they know if something has to postpone us, we've got an A, B, and C. This tape we've made does not disappear. You know, Good. it Good. is here ready to show to the world and not before we have that opportunity. And that's where I am today. So, so uh, Missy, just on, on that last point. So is that is that something which is coming up or is that something which has, has happened? I'm, it's I'm not sure. imminent. Uh, imminent. We are one month into my first semester. Uh, we've got two months to go. Uh, we are planned to get this up on the big screen at the end of January. We didn't want to commit to a, a date yet, but the prospector's waiting to slot us in. Yeah. The poor prospector, every time they get a big name movie to put up to bring the audiences in, Hollywood keeps pulling it. Yes. You know, so they, they're struggling for just having content. Well, we, we've, we've had that conversation with, uh, with Dan Friedman um, mm. a, a few weeks ago, uh, who runs the Bedford Playhouse, which is a similar sort of arrangement. It's a local, uh, a local art centre um, with a, a movie theatre. And um, he's found that he's in a slightly better position than the big movie theatres who, who have to get large crowds in, in mm -hmm. order to sustain them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for the smaller movie theatres, they, they have a, a little more flexibility. Um, and it sounds like your arrangement with them is, is, is part of that. You know, it's part Absolutely. of that flexibility to be able to put on community uh, activities mm -hmm. uh, rather than necessarily having always to be relying on, on the big budget movies and, and filling seats. And as a nonprofit organization, people. you know, yeah. their focus is going to be very different. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's interesting. So your 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 organization is Play A Part? Play A Part LLC. Okay, and you have a website? I do, www.playapartllc.com. Fantastic. Playapartllc.com. So Fantastic, so people know all about that. And and your 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 physical base is in is in Ridgefield, obviously. Yes, your, your yes, we have a commercial virtual. space in Ridgefield on Danbury Road, very close to Main Street, right kind of in the hub of things. I, I couldn't be better located. I'm very, very lucky in that. Yeah, the, the Missy, how, how, how um, hard was it or easy was it or how was it um, to get backing for, for your building? Um, and, you know, did, did, was that um, a difficult process or did you get a lot of support right away or it's still happening? Yeah, no, I'd love to share. Um, there's an organization, the SBC, the Small Business, uh, SBC, Small Business Association. That doesn't make sense. But anyway, recommends called, um, oh, what are they called? SCORE. And they will assign you as a small business owner, a mentor. And these mentors walked me through everything I needed to know to start a business from the forms, from the taxes, from the this, from the that, to, to getting money. And uh, we, we crunched my numbers once, and they said, this is way too optimistic. And we crunched them again. And they said, we think, we honestly think that your enrollment, your tuition can sustain you to get you going. You know, if the people come in, if they pay the tuition, if the kids are there, if they're loyal, you can get things going and then have a proven financial record of success to get the small business loan that they're offering oh, to women and new business owners. So I'm glad I took that advice. I, I took a risk and uh, I've got a, a, some wonderful angel backers on Kickstarter. God bless Kickstarter. Another thing I'd never heard of before. 
um, you know, parents who were looking for me, you know, who, who suddenly I didn't have my email address, suddenly I didn't, you know, have my, my, my desk at my office, uh, found me through social media, and they were very quick to, to offer support, not just emotionally, but financially, which was amazing. So between Kickstarter, between uh, students enrolling and the tuition that sustains, um, I am off and running, but there's going to be a point where I'm going to need that small business loan, and uh, it's coming up, so wish me luck. Keep, keep, keep the fingers crossed mm -hmm. on that. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is, it, you're, you're almost a sort of textbook case for, um, uh, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, for, for someone in, in, in this kind of uh, area who has always done what they've always done, Back to that, you know, because you, uh, and we've all been in the same position, you know, up, up at the uh, up at the Sherman Playhouse, like most other small theatres, you know, we put on four or five shows a year, mm -hmm. one at season. We, you know, between, you know, it's, it's what you do. And, mm -hmm. you know, okay, at this point in the year, we've got to get the publicity out. And at this point of the year, we've got to, and, and then, you know, it's a show and then we audition the show, audition, like, break down, open up, it, you know, and suddenly that stops. And as we yeah. as we as we've noted, I think we noted last week, we um, you know when we were speaking, um, uh, I think it was it was it Rick Walter we spoke to um, um, uh, quite a few weeks ago, who um, is responsible for um, that's the ballet in Canada, isn't it? Um, that, that's that, Barry Hewson. That's Barry Hewson. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, Rick, and yep. sorry, Barry, I mixed you two up. But uh, yeah, so ba Barry is responsible for the effectively the Canadian National Ballet. Um, they were in exactly the same position. They'd been doing what they had a set pattern of what they did with a few extra things here and there. Yeah, but and so just to comment on that, the, something the, can be wrote and still be a joy. It yes. definitely was. I was in a groove. Absolutely. You know, it never turned rote as in a slug or a mindlessness. Uh, ab there was absolutely. always a consciousness to it. But definitely I had my groove and I was running with it. Yeah, and you, you have the momentum, and as you say, you hit, you hit momentum. that Momentum, it was all about momentum. What are you going to do now? And uh, you obviously had the double whammy with the furlough and everything as well. But the, you know, the effect was, you know, I think what a lot of people um, in, in the arts had, had faced. Uh, what do we do now? Uh, and again, you're, you're a, a poster child for, you know, what, what do we do next? We I knew I had we, to do something. We, we, I knew we, I couldn't do nothing. make it work. I was crawling yep. the walls. Absolutely. You, you know, at, at one point I started work. sewing. I started sewing masks. I was sewing masks like a mad woman. Sewing masks, sewing masks. <laughs> I'm like, why am I doing this? Why am I sewing masks? Like more masks than I could ever wear. Masks everywhere. And it was because at that time I should have been sewing costumes. Yeah. I should have been creating props. I should have been, you know, designing. And my brain was still in that groove. And uh, I, I can't not create. I had well, to do something. Well, well, well done for you know, taking that creative energy and using it to create something that probably you hadn't ever imagined um, you would you would be doing. Uh, and, uh, and and again, that's been indicative of, of, of really what we've seen from uh, from a lot of our guests. You know, they, they, mm -hmm. they've got skills, they've got abilities, they've got initiative. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact that it's not what they've always done uh, it's something new is is uh, you know is a uh, uh, sort of testament to how adaptable right. they are. So well done, well done with that. Uh, we'll, well, thank you. We'll, we'll move on. Um, Please, don't, yep. but don't go anywhere. No, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, so so stay, stay there on the coach, and uh, <laughs> I'll pass back to Robin. Um, Robin, would you like to introduce our next guest? Sure. Um, as with a lot of guests coming up, um, never met this. Um, individual face-to-face, uh, -face, but he, um, you know, through other people, that's what this business is all about. He agreed um, to do it, and, uh, you know, I saw his bio and pick, and I said, hopefully he'll do it, and he said yes. So Peter Evangelista comes from, uh, I believe, New York City, actor, uh, a lot of great credits. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I was actually, uh, I'm very flattered. That's how I was going to start off uh, my little segment by saying that I'm, that I'm really flattered because, uh, I've never uh, failed to be surprised by random acts on social media and things like that, people reaching out. Um, I've had a teacher reach out to me saying, would you mind speaking to my class of young students that are learning, uh, you know, drama in my English class? And um, 
you know, my story kind of paralleled where his kids were. So, uh, I, of course I said yes. And, uh, I'm really, I'm really, uh, you know, excited to be here and, and very flattered by this opportunity. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, you uh, you grew a beard recently, or is yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I look very different from uh, fo from my photo that I sent, and I and uh, um, I guess I got bored and decided <laughs> the, I could grow a beard, and why not, and do it. Uh, I also started taking yeah. up woodworking, so I figured I, that was a prerequisite to dealing with that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> didn't come with an axe, so I had to go out and buy one to chop down some trees. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. either yes. woodworking or craft ale. Yeah, so either yeah, exactly. Wood, wood yeah. Craft ale, like one or the other. <laughs> yeah, it's one or the Missy, other. Missy was doing masks. You were doing your beard. Everybody's working on something. That's we're all working on something. Creating, it's creating. <laughs> creating, creating <laughs> facial hair. I can't do it. I'm trying. Right. More hairs. And he's so good at it. Um, I'm very uh, so. Excited. Peter, um, just uh, give us a, a a brief summary of your wonderful um resume and uh, how this pandemic has affected you at all yeah so uh like you mentioned I'm, I'm from new york i was uh born and raised in queens and um uh i got my start in acting uh, in my opinion very late it was something i knew i always wanted to do and i just kind of shied away from the kids that were going to do drama um and do the school plays and the musicals and things like that it just wasn't my speed um but i had an english teacher uh my senior year of high school that made a proposition to the class and basically said like we'll get as much work as done as possible and then we'll watch movies for the rest of the year if you all promise to make one um doesn't have, oh. to, do don't have to do anything special but i want you to get together with a group of, of students and uh go out and make a movie it could be a documentary it could be a game show it could be a talk show it could be a silent film whatever you want um and uh I guess by fate, the kid sitting next to me who became one of my best friends was like, I want to do this for real. I'm going to be an editor and a director like my brother. Um, you want to do it? You seem like you're pretty, uh, you know, interested in doing it. And I said, yeah, absolutely. So um, that's how I got, I caught the bug and that's how I got my start in acting. Um, and then from there, I knocked around for a little bit. Um, school wasn't really in my, uh, my future. I, I didn't want to go to university. I didn't want to go to college and study business and sit in a classroom or anything like that. Um, so I took some time and then I knocked around the city and I met James Price, who, uh, who is a Meisner protege um, and was given permission to go ahead and teach the Meisner technique. And he started his own studio back in 83. It's called the Acting Studio New York. Um, and just becoming friends with him, he kind of said like, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but if you want to like really focus on acting, I think you should and stick around. And I was like, yeah, okay. Um, so from there, I, I started knocking around in the theater and they have a, um, a repertory company called Chelsea Rep um, and cast me in a couple of shows as like a, an, an underclassman with the uh, graduating students. And from there, I just said, I got I to gotta do more theater. I have to be here doing this thing. I don't know what it is. I've, I've never been exposed to it, but I love, I love it. So uh, from there, I knocked around the off-off-Broadway circuit, uh, making my way to off-Broadway. I forget what year it was, 2000, maybe 15, 14, something like that. Um, and uh, I got a, a couple of, you know, nice credits from that and then uh, was able to grab some representation. And uh, from there, they started getting me in bigger rooms and started seeing people. So I booked myself a couple of uh, co-star spots from it, um, working with uh, HBO and Showtime. Uh, most recently, I worked with uh, on Monsterland with Hulu uh, producing it. Um, so co-star spot, one episode, but it was great to work on and see a lot of like new artists, not not uh, name faces uh, that you might see, um, and that they're actually giving us a chance, you know, to make. They're trying to make new actors and new stars based off of the series, from what I've seen. Um, got cast in a couple of indie films uh, fingers crossed they're going places one was on uh, netflix it's called bully um, and it's about a young high school kid who gets bullied and learns how to defend himself through boxing and uh, i kind of play like the high school tony soprano who comes in at the end and kind of pulls a few strings and uh, does his thing and tells people you know where to go um and yeah, that's that's basically where I was at before everything happened. So I was going on auditions and um, had a few p 
potential projects that were looking for homes. Um, I started working with uh, Dennis Grimaldi, who is a three-time Tony Award winning producer and director. And uh, he was directing a show called uh, Alpha Learns to Love. Um, and I was playing the title character of Alpha. And from there, it was we had done a couple of workshops and, and readings of it and uh, trying to get some uh, potential backers and investors. And uh, that's COVID just kind of put a stop to everything like that. So it was more what was in the future as opposed to what was in the immediate. Um, I wasn't currently shooting anything, but uh, was very hopeful that, that springtime things were going to kick off. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Awesome. Yeah. Um, go, go ahead, Robin. Yeah. No. Um, so have you, uh, do you have, do you, did you have to put off projects um, or are you able to do them? Uh, are they on hold um, or are you just uh, on hold yourself? Uh, I guess it's a little bit of both. I mean, I'm not so much on hold. Um, I think when, when everything first started to happen, I just was hopeful that uh, June, I know June was thrown around a lot. Missy had mentioned it. June was like the thing we were all looking for. And it seemed like ages away because we were just getting into pilot season. And, uh, you know, Broadway was, I had a, an audition lined up for Orphan, uh, no, what was it? Uh, American Buffalo on, um, on Broadway. And I was really looking forward to that. And it just kind of went nowhere. So I think I was more, uh, putting myself on hold for a little bit and just saying, all right, I'll wait until June and see what happens. Um, you know, uh, both my uh, reps turned to me and they said, like, this is what's going to happen. We're, fur we're being furloughed. Um, we'll let you know when we come back. So, you know, stay tuned. And just like everybody else, we all just kind of hung out for a little bit, um, you know, protecting our families and ourselves and staying safe and healthy. Uh, so yeah, projects, projects on hold. I put myself on hold for a little bit. I think that's uh, when I started to get into like other hobbies and things, you know, woodworking and whatnot. Um, uh, growing a beard. Um, and and then I, I guess around, I want to say September is when I had like my first phone call back from my manager saying like things are starting to come back in. This is what we're looking at. This is the way the industry is moving. And um, what I thought was interesting was that like, you could go on an audition and it's gonna set to shoot in October, but that could also mean November and that could mean December. So you're not on hold, but you're on hold. And then you're on hold to being on hold. And it's like uh, Abbott and Costello in a, in a weird way. Um, yeah, hurry up and wait. Right? Yeah, hurry up and wait. Yeah, exactly. Which is what it's like on a film set. But at the same right. time, this is my life. So I can't hurry up. I can't, you know, stop time. But, right. uh, you know, we're, you know, fingers crossed. We were hopeful um, as of right now. I, I've, it's been very quiet. Um, but that's kind of okay, too. I think we're, we're all in it together. And that's why we're doing things like this. And um, as I mentioned, uh, Chelsea Repertory Company that was associated with the studio I studied at, um, they've done numerous play readings uh, to keep the actors and the community, uh, you know, going and growing, um, trying to open it up to new people to come in and uh, create new ideas. And that, that's what sparked a, a festival, a Zoom fest um, that they that finished. I think it wrapped up, I think it wrapped up a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think it was middle of this month that it finished up. And I thought, um, I thought it was an interesting way for us as actors to perform and still try to connect with another person and create that that scene and that ambiance using virtual backgrounds and music and and all of those things. So, uh, you know, we're, as artists, we're adapting just just like everybody else. Um, and it's not just about wearing a face mask when you go in public. You know, it's it's about being able to share experiences and um, and still create and still you know perform and and keep theater alive. You're, I mean, again, we, we, we've, that's a common thread that, uh, that comes through and um, I'm sure other industries, activities, um, um, I'm trying to think of the right pastime, you know, other things that people are involved in that aren't an interview with performing arts. I'm sure they too have the network of, of people that support and want to, want to continue in that. But it does seem to be very special, and you, you, 
some of the things you said about, you know, you all support each other. Uh, you all want to keep doing this. Um, and, you know, we, we, I don't think we've had anybody on the, uh, on the show who has um, made any kind of suggestion that, um, you know, the precautions that we all have to take, the safety measures, the social distancing, the mass are, are anything but essential, yeah. um, despite the fact that they absolutely get in the way yeah, yeah. of doing what you do and doing what you want to do. But it does seem yeah. to be that, that that level of support from um, all that exists within the performing arts um, it, it is, is somewhat self-sustaining. We've, yeah. said this, we've said this before that obviously, you know, if people aren't working and aren't earning, that's hurting them. Um, right. and, and that's very much the case for the um, for those that, that support the productions, you know, the technical side of things. That's very much for, for, for those. Um, but it does seem as though there's a lot of sustenance that can be taken from uh, from the fact that we're all in this together. I just see Missy did drop out. Let me just admit her again. There we go. We're admitting Missy again. She dropped off the, uh, the Zoom. Um, I'm, I'm interested uh, really to hear um, about that the move you made from not really being interested in the high school plays or not or not no not necessarily coming into contact with high school plays community theater and and that kind of thing but then making that jump into um into enjoying uh acting and and, and you 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 made the comment about you know that, that's just what you have to do yeah, you, know, you 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 realize that this is what you want to do, what you've got to do. You know, I'm I'm interested in just trying to understand uh, when that light bulb came on and when you realize that, yep, this is it. This is what I found. Uh, I think it. I think a, a lot of it had to do with. Um, I mean, again, I think it was a it was a huge turning point for me. My my senior year of high school. I mean, towards the end and realizing acting is what I wanted to do. I mean, my dad's in construction, so I went to work. And uh, digging ditches for 12 hours a day is no fun. And uh, I would just be like, yeah, this is kind of not what I want to do. Even on the, on the business side of it and being in, a, you know, in the office, it was just, it was a life that I would just wasn't into. So that kind of pushed me further into wanting to explore. Um, I think just saying I have to do it was, was, I think, me getting a little bit more and more and more. And every time I went back, I learned something new and I was like, wow, this is, this is a craft. This isn't just, you know, for fame and fortune. This is like an, you actually have to develop skills to be good at doing this. There's so many different things you have to juggle. And, you know, you talk to any kid and they think, oh, you're on YouTube or you're on TV, you're famous, right? Like you're rich and, and like, you know, it's easy. I could do that. And it's like, yeah, no, it's not. When you start, yeah, to it doesn't, work, doesn't it, work quite like that. <laughs> yeah. It's not like that at all. So, so the fact that it, I guess it was, it is a craft. And for me, I was discovering that, wow, there's like, there's a lot of moving parts to this thing. Like, this is amazing. Like I have to develop skills and uh, all this stuff. That's, I think that's what really caught me was, and it was also the competitive nature, I guess, that I have is that I know I wasn't good at it. I knew like right off the bat, I was like, man, this, I watched some of this stuff and I'm like, this is awful. So going back to being a kid and judging yourself, Missy, it was like, man, I, but I want to be better at this. Like, I know I can do it. I want to keep going. So I think it was just, a, had to do with a lot of that. I, the, I think getting a taste of working on a film and I didn't know what I was doing, uh, only fed that, that fire that I didn't really know I had, hmm. um, or didn't want to acknowledge. So I guess just the, the more of the, you know, repetition side of it, just going back and getting a little bit more. So. Yeah. And I, I, I expect um, that that's something which, given the fact that you're, you know, involuntarily uh, furloughed, uh, mm. take Mrs. Word from earlier, yeah. uh, where, you know, you, you can't really do what you do or what you would love to do. Um, do you find that's, that's sort of feeding into, you, you said about the, the woodwork, you know, do, you, mm. do you feel that sort of creating is is the thing you're you're looking to do in in the interim yeah yeah i mean i think that's that's just sums it up is yeah that's the creating is what i'm looking to do 
Um, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize how much I guess that need to create, uh, you know, you're auditioning and you're going out there and you're, you know, you're grafting, you're hustling, you're trying to, you're trying to get the next job and keep going and use momentum and keep going forward. And you, you lose sight of the whole creating and it can kind of take a backseat. It's like this weird, I guess, seesaw or whatever. So yeah, picking up on, on something like woodworking or even painting or whatever it is that I can find for me that fills that creative void that I no longer have with acting. I mean, yes, you can do as many Zoom uh, performances a, as you want, but it's not, the, it's not the real thing. That's just my personal opinion. It's yeah, I, I, no, I think, I think that's, that's, a, that's a very valid, valid opinion. And uh, one of the things that we've discussed in previous, um, uh, previous calls is, is really this notion of, you know, it, is, is this the new normal? Is this yeah. the way it's going to be for an extended period of time? Um, and, you know, it looks like, you know, at least in well into next year, uh, this will this will be the norm. Uh, but what is likely, and I think, we, again, I think we talked about this last week, what is likely is that, that this is likely to give rise to another medium. Another art form. Can I another, jump in on that? Uh, oh, sorry? Can I jump in on that? Yeah, you can jump in on that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that there's a generation of young creatives coming up right behind me, my students, uh, that are jumping on the social media as an art form in a big way. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see a branch. I think when, uh, when COVID's under control, we're going to find that it's a, a venue in itself. And, and we're going to see amazing things that we never even conceived of. I, I think I, I would I would agree with that. Um, that whilst live theatre, um, TV, movies, you know, will will persist, um, and you know, there's a. Um, there's it doesn't mean we lose what we had before. We well, can exactly. we, we can there'll, have there'll both. Be, there'll be a bod there'll be a body of work waiting to get out into those existing formats. Um, so. You know, Peter know. and other working actors are likely to be busier than ever uh, and have more choice than ever in mm. uh, uh, in 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 a you know, few months' time. Um, something new will also have emerged. Um, but I, I I agree with you, Peter. If, if what you want to do is is perform, you know the way you want to perform, you know the way you want to express yourself. This may be a pale. You know, it, it will do. You know, it's, it's yeah. a it, it's yeah. a it's a it's a way of keeping, you know, uh, keeping limber of not uh, of not going too stale. Yeah. But if it's not if it's not the way you would choose to perform, then that's perfectly uh, perfectly understandable. But I do think that we will see, I think we will see some stuff emerge, which um, before we before we join the 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 meeting proper earlier, we were talking with Missy. Um, uh, her son is uh, is studying um, sort of game game technology. design game mm -hmm. design computer design. game design and, and where games have come in the last twenty years. Oh yeah, uh, their far, performance as as, in many ways. As far as being a performing uh, uh, an art form yeah. in themselves, a lot of I actors think... I know have, have been cast in in and that's like yeah, they're saying it's the most amazing experience they've had, even though they're in a, a bodysuit or whatever yes. they're called. It's virtual, but it's yeah. still creating. Yeah. yeah, so that there's, you know, I think I, I, I agree. I think there's there's things that will, which will come out of this. Or some stuff left behind. Some stuff will come out, and we might well find that this is a, uh, a medium that that joins, uh, joins the the other mainstream mediums in in time. So, Robin, do you? Uh, I had a question um, along those lines. Thanks, Missy, for 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 chiming in on this as well. Um, but most Peter and and Missy and Emily, if you want to join in, um, are well, let's say, Peter, would you, are the Zoom opportunities or the virtual opportunities, um, I would assume that they're not very fruit, they're, they're, they're not very, uh, they're not paying you a lot for that. Or are they the same amount? Or do you choose whether if they're paying this amount or I'm going to wait for this? Or do you do it that way as well? I think, I think there's been, there's been a lot of talks with, um, with the unions as to where we stand with this because it it falls in a gray zone that we've never had to think about i mean you, right. you think of like the broadway shows that they they televise live or they 
pre-recorded them and then air them on on TV, and that's a whole different thing. But they've already established that and kind of settled on that. When now royalty companies had to adapt too, right? Royalty right. companies had to lean with us. A hundred percent. And now you're saying, uh, okay, but it's live. People are watching it as it's happening, yet it's on screen. So now what do we do? Right. Residuals, baby. Right. Exactly. And if it's recorded and then shown on uh, streams like YouTube and Facebook uh, uh, TV or Instagram TV, whatever it is, you're like, well, what's going on? So I think the contracts that, you know, I've heard about, I haven't received any or haven't seen any kind of come across my desk or uh, my managers is, is more like they're trying to do it based off of either they record it and then pay you in terms of that or it's uh, whatever happens like per live performance kind of deal. Um, so if you're doing a show that's on Zoom, I, I, did, I did have the opportunity to see a show that's, it was theatrical in a sense, but it was really a magic show on Zoom and how they used Zoom and their uh, some certain software to kind of do it. And I think that those actors were paid on a contract. So the shows were performed live and they were paid like theater actors, yet, uh, they might have recorded one show so that they can then turn around and um, and air it and uh, people could rent it or watch it or whatever. But you needed a live audience in order to interact with the magicians and what they were doing. So I, it's on my end, I wish I could give you more insight, but it's still a gray zone for me too. I haven't had an opportunity pop up yet. I'm hoping that maybe it comes in tomorrow or something, you know, mm -hmm. um, but, but that's, I think a, a very- then you got the beggars can't be choosers. Uh, yeah, philosophy exactly. Here, so. And you turn around and you say, well, you're not working. And I, <laughs> despite, despite not really thinking that this zoom uh, festival, like interaction thing is, is top notch. I mean, I love working from home. Um, that was <laughs> on the plus side is I, Oh, I don't have to leave my space. I don't have yeah. to wear pants. Great. I'll do it. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I think yeah, beggars can't be choosy. So if you you want to work and you want to get that work, you, you'll you'll make it kind of you'll adapt to it. So and it's so new, it's rough now, but yeah. it's yeah. gonna it's gonna go. I think there's a lot of stuff going on too. Uh, Steve, you want to move on? To... Uh, yeah, I think I think we'll 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 move on to Emily. Thank you, uh, Peter. Just uh, hang uh, hang tight though, and we'll 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 probably come back and talk about a few of these things uh, in a little more detail um, towards the end. But uh, now it's time to move over to Emily. So, uh, Robin, would you like to do the honors? Yeah. So, uh, Emily Denova, I knew her a long time ago. I'm not going to uh, give any ages out or anything like that. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was interesting because I was directing Jekyll and Hyde for uh, Nanawag High School, and you were doing that for Holy Cross, and I think we were up for the same awards at Seven Angels. Am I right about that? Uh, yeah, I was at I was at Chase, but yes, we were. I'm up sorry, for not, not the Holy same Cross. Angel. Oh, that, that was terrible of me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's all uh, good. <laughs> uh, it's Waterbury. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> so that was Chase, right? Um, and then uh, I think we, we kind of saw each other's performances. I thought that was interesting. Um, but I, I have seen your career since, and um, we've been on Facebook for a while. And then we talked a bit um, before this, um, and I was really interested in you're doing a lot, of, a lot more writing, which is great. Um, and uh, I think you're still local, right, in Connecticut? No, I'm in Hope. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. I was talking to so many people. All right. So... Um, Give us a, uh, your background, please, and how COVID has affected you. Sure. Um, well, I started performing at a very young age, playing the piano. And my teacher told my parents that I had good pitch and they should get me into voice lessons, which led to 12 years of classically singing opera um, and training mm -hmm. for that. So that's what I went to school for. I had a scholarship uh, for classical vocal performance. Two years in, I was like, these aren't my people. Let's make a switch. Um, I started studying English with a concentration in theater, which uh, was acting, directing, screenwriting, film, kind of got a whole rounded education out of that. Um, I did a lot of, uh, you know, interning, um, working behind the scenes, learning lighting, learning sound mixing, building sets, painting, the whole thing, kind of like what Missy was talking about, uh, really getting my hands into the industry as a whole. Uh, after school, I moved to New York. I was working at 59 East, 59th Street Theaters when I found out that I got a scholarship to go to grad school in London. 
So I did my double masters in writing for the stage and screen, which was a two year program in London. Um, and when I came back, I was home in Connecticut for about a month. I moved to Hoboken, uh, booked my first off-Broadway show, uh, Tony and Tina's Wedding, uh, got my union card and been working since. I met my partner doing that show. He and I started our own production company four years ago. Um, since then we produced, directed, wrote, act. Um, we did about six plays up in New York. We got uh, promoted to play Tony and Tina um, on tour. So we've toured internationally for the last five and a half years. Um, in between that, I uh, directed a little theater, directed my first film last August, uh, which was probably one of the craziest things I've ever done, but loved it. Um, and when COVID hit, I had been on the, the road um, through most of the end of 2019. I'd actually had a gig in Idaho and then Salt Lake City on New Year's. Uh, left there, went to Nebraska, was in Tampa, was in New Orleans, Mississippi, got home, and COVID hit. And I was actually in rehearsals for an off-Broadway show that was supposed to be going up at the end of March. So that got canceled. Um, everything got canceled. So uh, obviously, I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Tony and Tina's Wedding, but it's an improv show. It's interactive. Um, you want to talk about theater during COVID not being accessible. I mean, you're up in people's faces. You're kissing and hugging and screaming and spitting. I mean, it's like the worst possible thing you could do literally do during a pandemic. Um, so we just got like, sh we were like, oh shit, what are we doing? We're, we're here with we, all of our gigs for the rest of the summer got canceled. The shows we were doing got canceled. Um, you know, everything kind of just like everyone else fell apart. So um, I took that time to write. I was working on my third book, my third novel that I've written. I'm still trying to get all of them published. So don't get your hopes up, but uh that's what I started off on in COVID for the first month. I did that. Um, I had a, st a short story published uh, later on in the spring. And every year, my partner and I, since we started our company, have tried to produce at least one piece of theater and one piece and, and one film a year. And we were actually able to do that this year. Um, so in August, uh, a very good friend of ours who we've worked with both on and off the stage, I think she's actually going to be appearing on the show in December, uh, your guys' show. She uh, asked us if we were interested in directing and assistant directing this project. And with three weeks of pre-production during the pandemic, a SAG film, we uh, not only assistant directed and directed, we produced along with her um, this film, which was unbelievable. Uh, I mean, not just the union deal with everything, the, the restrictions and on so and on, obviously with the pandemic, but um, you know, COVID tests, getting everyone to the same place, people not being able to take public transportation, making sure everyone had a ride, the health safety manager, health safety security, you know, uh, all of this stuff that went on, you know, making sure everybody had their PPE, we had zones, we had this, we had that, and, and somehow um, we managed to put this thing together. We were out in the Poconos for three days and we shot this film and it's actually, um, it's just been completed. So that was pretty That's incredible. Awesome. Wow. Is that the one called Into the Water? Yes, yes. Um, okay. So if it, anybody gets a chance to see it, it, it has one of the best um, trailers <laughs> I've seen in a long time. That's very interesting trailer. Where can that we find the trailer? Uh, it's popping around on Facebook. You go to Into the Water. Uh, it's on YouTube. Page. Um, yeah, I think it's on YouTube. Um, but yeah, it was it was great. For, for that to like, happen happen during this pandemic. Yeah. I was like psyched for you guys because <laughs> you were able, I, I guess it was the Poconos, right? <laughs> yeah, we were, we were out in the woods, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it was, it was really cool because, you know, at that time, not a lot of, nothing was really going on, but um, our producer, or the producer was so determined, you know, we were doing this, this was going to happen. And um, somehow by some way it just came together, but to be able to, you know, catalog that and say, okay, this is this is what we did. We made this thing while this was happening. Yeah. It's, it's the sort of thing, you know, we were all kind of like, it was the first time seeing people and being on set and being like, oh my God, like this is this is so weird, but so familiar at the same time, you know. Um it must have been quite a quite a giddy experience to to suddenly be back into it and uh, and be as well as being able to see people and actually have a, an intelligent conversation with a with a real life person. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then I had gotten cast in a 
a play, a Zoom play, which uh, we've been working on now, which in regards to the uh, AEA versus, you know, SAG and what's been going on with that and showcase code this and that. I've been uh, producing that as well as I'm playing the, the lead female role in it. So um, we've been in workshop. And the really cool thing about that is that because we weren't on this like strict time schedule for rehearsals, we've been really able to explore and workshop the piece to the point where like the director has, uh, who is also the writer, has been able to shift things, move things. He's found things, his realizations within the work. Um, you know, it's one of those plays where you feel like you're this character in this, this short span of time, you know, and everything outside that is yours to create. So it's been really freeing in terms of being able to really like, you know, dig and, uh, and have the freedom to do that within a role. So We've been working on that since June. We're hoping to have the live streamed audience possibly pre-recorded. You know, we've been uh, shopping around for the best uh, code to fit us um, and our actors and make sure everyone is protected. And, and are, are, you, are you able to say what that play is? And uh, yes, it, more uh, information? it's called uh, Polly Walnuts is my barber. Um, it right. stars uh, Robert Panero, who played Eugene Ponchacorvo in The Sopranos. Um, he's, I know Bobby. Great he's guy. the best. Bobby is an ace. He's, he's one of my favorite people Watch to work with. Yeah. Yep. Um, he was, he and I were actually working on another play before, um, before COVID had hit, we had done a couple readings and that actually ended up being a Zoom, uh, reading as well. And again, it's this frustration with the, the platform, you know, there's a lot of things you can find out and create, but at the same time, it's very frustrating, you know. If someone's lagging or, or this is happening, especially when you're doing live performance, like we talked about earlier, uh, spam thong people coming in and yeah. messing up your whole vibe. Um, so, you know, I mean, I think for me, it's been like roll with the punches, you know, um, you know, woodworking, teaching, opening up places. Like I've kind of been in the same place. Like I've been doing a lot of um, cooking, uh, just trying to stay in my creative vein, you know, um, and, and just continue to push forward. But I think, the, the best thing and the best thing about being artists is that we are able to adapt, you know, that we're able to move forward and figure out new things. And, and in this madness, uh, we're finding inspiration ourselves. So I think that's really the main takeaway. I know it's getting crazy for me. I, I, I can't direct, you know, uh, real people, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Steve and I produced a, a Zoom play recently and that was great. It was a wonderful experience. I, I, and I wrote it. It was great. Um, great actors, great, you know, it really was, but it's its so ephemeral. It's just so, it's there, it's gone. Hopefully people will care in the future, but I'm I'm ending up, you know, putting on uh, paintings of Van Gogh on, on YouTube while listening to Gregorian chants. Sharing them with us. And sharing it with you. <laughs> what is Robin setting me? The, 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 this is, this is an insight it. into um, it's an insight into the mind of Frome. If you if you've, if you've ever seen if you've seen being John Malkovich with yeah. a little door that if, if ever that happens to Frome, I'm not going in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, scared. I'm scared. I won't go in there. <laughs> Please don't go into my head without a flashlight or a shotgun. That's 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 right. That's right. <laughs> no, but I, what I wanted to say was this: just like this creative spirit. Ugh, it's got to be utilized in some way and I stink at cooking and I stink at woodworking <laughs> and if you ask me to Missy knows this if I had to wear uh, make a mask I would fail miserably uh, <laughs> it's very good at costuming as well so uh, but it, yeah it, it's interesting to see what people are doing and, and I have been writing and I've been doing other stuff and and my students and all that stuff but it's kind of like you know Today in Connecticut was like <laughs> more dismal. Can we get more doom ridden here? You know. Yeah, we 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 had we had a we had a, a pouring down with rain. Covid's <laughs> Covid's on the rise in Connecticut, and yeah. you can't go anywhere. Internet and, so. and... But but having said that, and uh, Robin, I, I I know this is the case. I mean, you you've become uh, even more creative than than previously in terms of. You know, you 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 were president of uh, the Sherman Players, uh, the role I I took over, um, and clearly, you know, moving on from that gave you more opportunity to yeah. develop you know, more opportunity to in time. Uh, but also, the current situation has, yeah. has meant that that's that's what you focus on. But I think we all know, and Steve, you've directed too before. We all know that it's all a problem that we have to solve. Yeah. If it's a show. 
it's a problem we have to solve, you know, as, as That's in the exactly it. Life. You know, yeah. and this give me give me the you know, give me the dirty mess so I can Yeah. Fix put it, it all we together. Can't fix, if we can't fix this COVID thing, it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I know. Right. That's right. But we can cope. But we can we cope. Can cope. People are coping. And we, again we we're, we're hearing we're hearing all this, you know, uh, uh, we're hearing that creative people want to create. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if there's a vacuum, they'll create in it. Uh, and and Missy, I think your your experience of um, um, you know that th there'd be a lot of people who would say, "Oh, while all this is going on, I'm not going to I'm not going to try and start a new business." Um, yeah. You know, I'm not going. You it, know, but, it did seem pretty bananas to to some. But the but the um, um, the, the demand is out there. And if done intelligently, you know, I'm very impressed with Emily talking about the zones and the PPE and all that. I'm self-certified to be, you know, uh, COVID safe in my in my small little three room studio. I can't imagine a, uh, the the degree of, of I, I can't imagine the degree of attention you guys must have put together to film a a movie in the Poconos. You know, it's but if you're passionate, if you want to do it, the answers are there. You know. Mm -hmm. and 100%. you know and if you did it successfully then you're the one who can share that information with the next one who tries to tackle it. yeah i mean those self-administered uh covid tests were just the bomb let me oh did you have to stick it up your own nose oh. in a shop right parking lot no <laughs> Oh, oh, that, 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 oh, yes, that's, and there's, a, there's a whole oh. story behind that. I'll tell you guys, you know, after oh, my, my, <laughs> my toes are curling to that, to that, my toes are curling to that. But, no, but yeah, but yeah, no, we, you know, we, I think there's a, well, there's a way, you know, um, people wanted yeah. to make a movie and, and we hit obstacle after obstacle. I mean, every day we're like, SAG is not, but those obstacles don't have to be no's, right? The obstacle doesn't have to be a no. It's like Robin said, it's, I'm pointing, I don't know if you see, I'm pointing Robin, it's a problem you have to solve. It's an obstacle, but it's not a no. It's a, how do we do it? Right. You know? and, and, that's what you, and that's what I have found so valuable about producing over the last four years, five years, is that, you know, you really get the bigger picture to the point where you appreciate things so much more when you're on the other side of it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I had shot a pilot last November and I hadn't been on set in a while as an actor, but as, you know, this, that, the other thing. And the the sound guy was going crazy because he didn't have time. He was freaking out. And I'm like, I'll mic myself. And he's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> no. And I was like, no, no, no. I worked in sound mix. Like, I can. And, and he was, like, amazed. And I was like, you know, it's just, like, little things like that. Like, I try to help out wherever I can. I'm, I'm always very conscientious of everyone else's job and what everyone else is doing. And I think the the importance of what we do, not as entertainers, but as artists, is collaboration. And if more people could just put their ego aside or not give a shit about being the whole thing, you know, more would get done. And that's why Into the Water worked, because it was a true collaboration. Everybody wanted the same thing. It wasn't about this. It wasn't about that. And we just made it happen. Yeah, and we, we have a, a guest here named Jessica Granger who, who did a, a fantastic uh, little story for Vogue uh, recently. If you ever get a chance, it's on our chat uh, to take a look at it. But um, she tried to get something going on, on Candlewood Lake, and it, it just it, – it was so early on. You know what I'm saying? I remember that, so yeah. Early on, it, it was just – too much but she's gonna do it next year you know at least at least something will happen out of that you know right she's she's gonna gain the the, the from the time that's passed the knowledge the rest of us have yeah. how, how did they do that how did you solve that which is why this format you guys created is so good too well it, yeah. it, 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 this this what this has worked uh and, and you know obviously we don't want to go into any kind of navel gazing but uh, this format has worked very well for uh, for robin and i um stop looking at your navel robin you, you haven't seen that for years <laughs> I can't uh see but uh th yeah we've um uh, you know we, we we didn't really know the, where this would go we really didn't we you know we planned for it to last through july um thinking that half thinking that covid would be waning by then anyway uh and and we wanted to give some sort of uh, short-term respite and and uh, and help where we could for anybody that needed a bit of a bit of uh, boosting um and it's it's proved to be far more interesting and far more in depth than i think either of us could ever have uh, yeah. ever have thought and then I, I, you know, I know personally i've learned a lot that comment about 
at uh, looking at every pimple and every stutter and every um and, uh and um, whatever. Um, you know, I now wore a jacket just to make myself look a little more <laughs> and, and, and hide the fact that I look about three feet wide when I don't. Um, <laughs> And little things like that, you know, just these little things that we pick up as we go along. I, I feel a lot more confident uh, producing um, virtual and online stuff for uh, for the Showman Playhouse now. It was something which I hadn't really considered before, something which a lot of us had never considered before. Right. Um, I now feel a lot more confident that people will want to watch it. Can I share that was? Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's right. Along with what, real quick, along with what Steve was saying, and he's heard me say this before, I thought it was going to be a cry fest. I really did. I thought people... Has anyone be, cried? Just, I came close. <laughs> no, I'm not today. Like when That's what therapy started. is for. I know, that's what therapy is for. I gotta go. <laughs> and, and, and that's kind of what we yeah. thought. That's kind of what we thought this... this oh, I thought, I thought it was... And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so depressing. I hope people don't go nuts, you know, just weeping through the whole thing. And it's been the opposite, actually. That's exactly. the community. That's the community we're in, you know. Yeah. yeah. Although, yeah. Ha having said that, and we, you know, we, we've seen emotions come to the surface. Um, yeah. D during yeah. during uh, during this, we've seen you know people who who have been struggling. Uh, yeah. And what's been great is that the you know the 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 other guests on the uh, uh, on the program have uh, they haven't just said you know they're there it could be okay. They've had <laughs> practical solutions. Right. They've had strategies. They've empathy, had and sympathy and all that. Exactly, mm -hmm. they've had experience. Uh, and this is what we find. We, 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 um, we get a really good mix of, uh, of um, um, experience um, and um, youthful energy. And we get, especially last week, was a, was a prime example of yeah. that, where we, you know, the, the guests we had on were, did span the age ranges and the, the, the experience, um, mm. the level of experience. Uh, and we were, I, I was quite surprised that we were seeing the same level of energy uh, from both. Uh, Can I share another how thought? To make it work. My sure. mind keeps coming back to the the, the obstacles thing, and I, I have this thought forming in my head that's either going to come out brilliant or it's going to come out awkward. But I was thinking about how, as actors, we were tasked from go to take a set of parameters that have been put around us, be it by a, a director, it's a framework, right? You can call it parameters, you can call it the, the playwright and the expectations of the director and their vision and the producers and the budget and all that. And then within these parameters that we've been constrained to, we have to find avenues uh, for the creativity, uh, for the expression, for the inventiveness as actors. So we're kind of used to having a framework that we kind of have to find our way in and through and around. And I wonder if almost that way of thinking that we were trained in, you know, from acting 101 really didn't prepare us to, to bend, to, to flex. We were prepared and we were also prepared for trial and error. Yeah. 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 Because it's all an experiment. It yeah. is. It absolutely yeah. is. Oh yeah. No, nothing, Fascinating. Nothing, nothing guaranteed to, to succeed. Um, but the the one thing I've learned um, is that there always still will be a performance. Mm -hmm. There always will still be a performance. It doesn't matter what what you're going through. You, you you open. I've never been in a show which has been cancelled before opening night. Other people have. I know this this happens, uh, but I've never been in a show that's been cancelled before opening night. When the collective um, mindset is all on that goal, yeah, it it'll happen. Yeah. yeah, so there's there's a I mean that that's I mean that's a very telling point. Missing. Unless COVID, you know. Well, well <laughs> you know, co co COVID gets in the way, but then things Think other things happen. Yeah, th th things come up from the from the bottom. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. Peter, uh, just to um, um, you, you're on the sharp end of acting. Um, you're you know you're 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 a jobbing actor. Uh, you're you're off. You know what. What other opportunities within um, sort of this creative field, um, if you know, if the jobs dry up, um, if if you find okay, I'm I'm still not going to be working for another three or four months, um, apart from the odd thing here and there. Right. Um, are there any other 
avenues that you've you've toyed with getting involved in you know education directing uh producing uh writing and any of those, those areas yeah all of all of them uh uh I've written a couple of screenplays myself. I mean, I don't know if you mean just writing in terms of the, in terms of acting or, uh, you know, the entertainment business or writing in terms of like, I, I haven't wanted to write a, a novel or anything like that. I mean, I write poetry. Um, that could be something that I could pursue. Um, uh, definitely directing. I mean, I love, I, I love directing. I love being in the theater or, or even on a f film set and creating and looking at things from an outside perspective and trying to uh, maneuver my way around whatever parameters I have to work with there. Um, I mentioned James Price, who, who I studied under, and uh, he always said, be three-dimensional. Don't just be a one-dimensional actor. Uh, you know, even if you don't pursue it... Um, as much as you would pursue acting. And that was the first love that you had in terms of this business. Um, you never know how you're gonna get your foot in the door, just get it in the door and then go from there. So if you're directing the piece, you can maybe you know play a supporting role. If you're not, if you wanted the lead, you could still be in it. Um, you know, if acting's not going for you, then write something and you can get that made. And then you could put yourself in, in other ways. Um, also to learn, you know, better vocabulary and how to collaborate on, on a project, you know, learning those things. So yeah, um, and I and I do I do teach. He asked me to teach the uh, the teen workshop. So I've been working with uh, young actors that are either in the business or just learning, you know, learning about it and wanting to come in. Yeah. Um, I, I love all of them, but they I think I love all of them to bring me back to acting. But yeah, I would I would pursue if I couldn't act, I would definitely do something else. Yeah, yeah okay. either that or just quit the business altogether and not want to. I mean, I'm not anything. Walk, walk, walk away. I mean, that, that, yeah. that, that's, that's interesting because I know Robin's asked this question uh, before. In fact, I'll let him ask the question again about uh, people leaving the industry. Yeah, if we have a couple minutes. Um, so I usually ask the question Does anybody know of anybody that quit the business because of COVID because they just couldn't take it? They're losing money. Um, it's, you know, they're just not wanting to do the Zoom stuff or anything, or they just lost a lot of. Uh, desire to be in this business and it's one more screw as it were does anybody know of anybody and you don't have to name names or, or situations i know people looking into different avenues but i haven't heard from anyone that is a serious artist that they they're up giving it up for good i have i've not come across that personally yeah okay. you know that i mean that, that that's interesting i i, I watched a, a video um, on, on YouTube, I think someone posted it on Facebook um, last week, I think, from uh, the, the theatre um, theater performance in, in London at stage. And it was a, you know, they were, they were singing and dancing in the street to, um, I think, one of the songs from The Greatest Showman. Um, and as they went along, they were holding up signs saying, you know, don't retrain, don't leave the industry. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, stick stick with it. It will come back. You know, mm. save the arts. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and it, and it, it that that you know that was a that was clearly again the support of artists and creators for artists and creators. Mm. You know, don't give it up. Stick with it, and uh, and you know things will come back round. As Robin said before, the you know it it's always been in trouble. You know, the arts has always been in trouble in one way, shape, or form. It's never been an easy. Uh, an always easy the first thing. thing they cut in school programs is the arts. Oh, yeah. is always the yeah. first thing that gets cut, and it's like, why? You yeah. need that. Kids. It's shown over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Why are oh, kids taught how to finger paint if they're not going to? You know, if we don't need the arts, like that's like one of the first skills they learn. So yeah, whole no, side no, of the brain being neglected. Yeah. yeah and, and as 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 people have said, if um, you know, people are consuming you know series on on netflix people are binge watching people are, are you know what do you think's making those things who's who, who's, who's yeah. making yeah. that you know yeah. and, and where those people yeah. come from mm -hmm. where those people they've got they've got to learn this somewhere and that is a concern of mine that uh, uh, without people like uh, like missy who are um able to take that step and that risk of uh, uh, of, of trying to keep that education going at that sort of um, um fundamental level uh, that um out of this, there may be a gap. There may be a gap 
in there may be. in in that that tribe mm-hmm. who 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 haven't phoned things depending on how long this goes on for but i'm 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 hopeful listening to 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 missy that uh, there are enough people out there who are um still passionate about teaching and 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 getting kids involved so uh, sure. um you know I, and once again you know we we've we've had a show which has been filled with positivity yeah. um with with, pragmati- with pragmatism <laughs> yeah, pragmatism and positivity um yeah. all Rob- all robin's fears from the start of this uh this, yeah. this series has been blown away. He, he has to find something else to be miserable about now. So, That's right. uh, and I will. I and, he, will. And, he will. <laughs> and he will. And he will. And he will. So we've 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 gone over time, uh, but um, I think we've gone over time in a fantastic way. Uh, I'm really <laughs> really pleased to have uh, have had you guys on uh, on the show, and um, really. All that's left for uh, for us to say is say good night. So uh, say good night, Robin. Good night, Robin. Uh, he's getting better at it. I'll, I'll, his timing's still a little bit off, but we'll, we'll get, we'll get him. We'll, we'll get him though eventually. But uh, so yeah, so it's done. <laughs> and it's uh, so so it's good night for me, and it's good night from from our guests, from from Emily, Peter, and, and Missy. And we will see you all again uh, same time next week. That's uh, seven. 30? Is it 7.30, Robin? It is 7.30 yep. Uh, yep. on Monday uh, evenings. And then again, you can watch this show on demand uh, and all the others in the uh, series so far on the Sherman Players Facebook page. So thank you very much and good night, everybody. Pleasure. Good night. Bye-bye yeah. now. <laughs>